Grant and Lee, a study in contrast. Browse Catton. About the author. Bruce Catton, 1899-1978, was a respected journalist and an authority on the American Civil War. His studies were interpreted by his service during World War I, after which he worked as a journalist and then for various government agencies. Catton edited American Heritage magazine from 1954 until his death. Among his many books are Mr. Lincoln's Army, 1951, A Stillness at Appomattox, 1953, which won both a Pulitzer Prize and a National Book Award, and Gettysburg, The Final Furry, 1974, Catton also wrote a memoir, Waiting for the Morning Train, 1972, in which he recalls listening as a young boy to the reminiscence of Union Army veterans. Background on Grant and Lee Grant and Lee, a study in contrast, which appeared in a collection of historical essays titled The American Story, focuses on the two generals who headed the opposing armies during civil war. Robert E. Lee led the Army of Northern Virginia, the backbone of the Confederate forces, throughout much of war. Ulysses S. Grant was named Commander-in-Chief of the Union troops in March 1864. By the spring of 1865, Although it seemed almost inevitable that the southern forces would be defeated, Lee made an attempt to lead his troops to join another Confederate army in North Carolina. Finding himself virtually surrounded by Grant forces near a small town of Appomattox Courthouse, Lee chose to surrender to Grant. The following essay considers these two great generals in terms of their both differences and their importance similarity. Summary in English Grant and Lee, a study in contrast by Bruce Catton is a compare and contrast essay about a turning point in American history. Robert E. Lee believed that social stature and pronounced inequality would build a better community by setting an example and standard of leadership and strength of the country to follow. Ulysses S. Grant, on the other hand, felt that only way a social class should be established is by how hard a man worked and how much he had made of himself. With two very contrasting views on how social equality is relevant to running the country, Grant and Lee had one major characteristic in common, which was their fighting qualities along with their need for peace. These qualities established them to come together and work through their differences, which in the end united American life and ultimately surrendered Lee's Army of Northern Virginia. Despite the essay, sheds light on the contrast between Robert E. Lee and Ulysses S. Grant, it ultimately unites the both in their moral responsibilities when it comes to the cause of nation building. Grant and Lee have become symbolic of two nations at conflict during the Civil War. Both had very different backgrounds and personalities that caused them to differ in their military leadership and accomplishment. By this time, America had become a country that was starting over with a simple core belief in equal rights for everyone. Lee, who is from Virginia, had very traditional and old-fashioned beliefs. He strongly believed in the idea that having unequal 
leadership as social categories provided an advantage to society. The confederacy embraced Lee as their leader as well. He would fight for the union with everything he had because he strongly believed in the union way of living he was raised in. Although Grant and Lee had individual be- beliefs that changed with one another, they also had a few things in common. For example, Caton points out they were both great fighters that displayed a lot of tenacity and fidelity to their separate causes. Grant battled and endured his way down the Mississippi Valley despite of his military handicaps and personal discouragements while Lee still had faith at Petersburg after all hope was lost. After their fighting, qualities were very similar and they both refused to give up as long as they were able to fight. They were both also very daring and resourceful in that they had the ability to move quickly and think faster than enemy. Most importantly, they were alike in the sense that they had the ability to turn away from war and come to peace once the fighting had ended. As a result, this helped the nation become whole and united again. Their gathering at Appomattox was a great moment in American history. Today, Americans live in a country that strongly follows Grant's belief in equal rights for everyone in which citizens are able to vote for who they want to choose as their leader. Grant wanted to see a country that stayed united and people that banded together in times of trial. He had no desire for split in the people. He only wanted to see the country succeed. Lee wanted a lower class that provided the workforce for the economy. He fought for his beliefs that slavery was essential to the economic stability in the confidentiary. Grant would have done anything to save the Union. He felt that without a united people, he did not have a future. Unlike Lee, who fought for preserving the old astrocratic culture, Grant only sought after what was best for the country, and he always looked ahead into the future. Grant was a prime example that you can still act with poise in the face of danger and make the right decision that will ultimately keep the country united. They were both good fighters and had an ability to think before their enemy acted. Most importantly, they had the will to win even after being near defeat. This essay is a classic point-by-point comparison. First, Catton discusses Lee the astrocratic representative of Tied War, Virginia. Next, he presents Grant, the son of a tanner, who was everything Lee was not. He moves from generalizations about each man to the ways they differed in character and orientation. 